professor is professor in one direction usually. Suppose I am professor in probability and statistics. I have some limited branches in other directions of mathematics. And modern mathematics consists of 110 different branches, remember. There is no person in our world, even between genius who knows all mathematics, absolutely excluded. Just only one branch, knowledge, is so vast, you know, that, for example, in probability, you, to be master of probability, you should know 300 volumes of mathematical text. And what about all mathematics? Com completely unreachable, you know. Though I know several branches, I have some knowledge, some basic knowledge in partial differential equations, in numerical analysis, you know. And uh, I have knowledge in variational analysis and some knowledge in geometry. And because of that, I have diversified <laughs> knowledge. In I was able just <laughs> alone to make that. Indeed, this work I have done with my PhD students in Pakistan. So several years I was teaching in Pakistan at the, at the Abdul Salam School of Mathematical Sciences. And uh, I have had there four PhD students. Two of them defended in probability and the other two defending in mathematical finance, exactly, you know. So, but usually abroad in the United States and in, in other countries, the group of scientists works, you know, for one person, it is too heavy, too heavy. It is like to be in prison, you know, a very complicated job. So, usually the group of specialists works. Several mathematicians, some economists, very good and professional finance specialists, physicists, computer specialists, and also specialists in uh, numerical analysis. They jointly work for about eight, ten people to solve practical problems. For, for one person, it is too heavy. So, these investment banks, <coughs> they issue financial derivatives, which, which are called options. They sell them, and uh, their clients have possibility to purchase them. So, the holder of call option has the right, but not the obligation, to buy for a, for a predetermined price K a share of stock. And the future date TV, which is called the expiration date of the option or maturity date of the option. Of course, for this opportunity, you should, <coughs> you should pay some initial payment. And that initial payment is called the options price or premium. Now, the, another side is financial institution, which is called the writer of the option, issuer or the seller. So that issuer receives the premium at the starting time, and then it tries to construct such a portfolio of assets, the value of which will increase over time, and when the maturity date or expiration date is realized, the issue of the financial institution should have portfolio of assets, uh, the value of which in cash is sufficient to cover the liabilities written, written in that option. So, I mentioned already different kinds of financial things, so I mentioned here portfolio of assets. This portfolio is denoted here by pi, you see, and it is a pair of money, uh, money market, and money market account, and, and stock. So, 
usually portfolio consists of some cash amount and the amount of shares of stock. So, what is doing the issuer of the option? He constantly rebalances his portfolio. Part of this portfolio, cash amount, they put at the bank account, and you know that when they put at the bank account, during certain time interval, it will only increase by bank interest rate. Suppose bank interest rate, for example, is 3%, and they put it uh, over the, that period, one year. Then suppose they put $1,000, $1, then in a year they, they will have $1,030, so it's evident. Then they, they may take that amount of cash and purchase for that amount certain amount of shares of stock. So, so issuer constantly rebalances his portfolio and his aim is, roughly speaking, uh, the increase in value of his portfolio as to have enough amount of money when the expiration date will come to cover the liabilities which are written in that whole option. So I again want to uh, notice that call option gives the right to its holder to purchase a share of stock for prescribed in advance price K, but not at the time initial date, but at some future date to be, which is fixed by that whole contract. And that is called the maturity date or expiration date of the call option. And after that date, it has no value. It is worthless. And you may, and he may throw it to the garbage. It has no value. So, <laughs> now what is a put option? What is a put option? And here, very roughly, it is written, uh, in this manner. So, put option also consists of two constants, K and TB. So, the holder of put option has a right to sell his own shares uh, <coughs> of stock. You know, now consider there is some investor, and that investor holds 10,000 shares of Microsoft company. And someone tells him that, do you know, in several months, uh, the uh, share of stock of micro uh, company price will decline considerably. And he fears that his capital will decrease. And for, for that reason, he wants to, pre uh, to protect himself from the unfair, unfavorable movement of uh, stock price. And because of the he purchased put option. Put option gives him the right that he may sell his own uh, shares of stock for a fixed price K at the future time to be whatever will happen on the stock market. A share of stock, the price of a share of stock may increase considerably at the time or decrease, you know, and irrespective of the movement in a stock price, he has the right to sell to financial institution a share of stock on the fixed price case. Now consider the situation that when the time to be is realized, indeed uh, stocks uh, price, stock prices of Microsoft company declines sufficiently, considerably. Now, if that investor does not have this kind of put option, his capital declines, and if he decides to sell his, his shares of stock, he will sell it for reduced price. While when he has a put option, he uh, is guaranteed that the issuer, the financial institution, will buy 
a shear roadster at this price case. So, this is some kind of protection against unfavorable movement on stock prices. Now, I want to, uh, uh, you know, <coughs> I want to look to this graph. And what is this graph and what is this picture? Now, look, please, that uh, this graph express the uh, stock price movements over time. That means a share of stock of some company we consider its corresponding price. And look how chaotically changed over time the corresponding price of a share of stock. Look, there are big fluctuations. Indeed, there are frequent fluctuations with big size, up and down. And now, if you look to that curve, you will see that not, nothing similar is in the classical mathematics, classical mechanics, physics, and so on. So you know the basics of calculus. And the, from that calculus, perhaps you know that classical curves, which you know from calculus, are very regular. They move smoothly, you know. They have derivatives and second derivatives. They go up slowly. They go down slowly. And nothing similar happens here. This is quite different movement. So, stock prices move in this very strange manner, which is chaotic motion. And maybe you have some knowledge. What kind of motion is this? Maybe some students know. It is very similar to Brownian motion, you know. Brownian motion is very chaotic uh, movement of some particles, and it was discovered at the start of 19th century by botanists, not mathematician or economists, by botanists, very strange, because genius people are everywhere. And it happens that the genius people who were botanists discovered fundamental things in probability and mathematics. For example, Bias, English botanist. Uh, also, he, he was a genius man because that he discovered Bias formula. That is the basic of all modern probability. So, <coughs> this Brown was observing the movement of particles suspended in a glass of water. These particles were colored in different colors. And when he observed the movement, they, they have done this chaotic movement, usually, this kind of movement. There was no regularity in that movement. He several times repeated the same experiment in a month, in, in two months, and so nothing changed. He was observing movement of seven particles under the microscope, which were colored in different colors. And he was observing that, that when they start movement from one point, ultimately they went to different directions, absolutely. So this means there is no determinism in that movement, no regularity, because from mathematics you may know that if the particles start nearby from, from some point, they will be close to each other over all time. And nothing similar happens here. So he discovered the movement first time in the history of science which is quite curious and looks like this very chaotic moment. Brown was botanist and he was unable to explain that kind of movement. And only after 80 years, great Albert Einstein explained that chaotic movement. And for this, he used statistical mechanics. So on the basis of statistical mechanics, he explained why these particles, small particles suspended in the water, 
move in such a chaotic and strange, strange manner. So, indeed, behind of these chaotic movements, uh, there were great minds, you know, Brown, Einstein, Wiener. Now, if you hear something about Brownian motion, you should know that Brownian motion and Wiener process are the same. So, they are the same. And all modern financial mathematics is based on stochastic calculus, not classical calculus. Now, I want to note that what you know, perhaps, from your economic faculty is just classical calculus. That means derivatives, integrals, classical integrals. But during the last 40 years, Quite another branch of mathematics was developed by different scientists and the uh, pioneer of the direction was Japanese mathematician Kiyoshi Ito. Ito developed quite different calculus, it is called Ito's calculus, and that is called stochastic calculus, that is quite different from classical calculus. Now I just want to notice that uh, classical calculus is compulsory for all students of economics everywhere. Engineers, mathematicians, and physicists. But what about stochastic calculus? All over the world, it is also compulsory for students of modern financial engineering, financial ma mathematics of more than uh, <coughs> quantitative methods of finance. So if you work in quantitative methods of finance, not the qualitative methods, but quantitative methods, the only possibility to do anything rigorously when you justify your intuition, you may find some very basic facts by intuition but you will have no opportunity to rigorously justify them, remember. And that technique which gives rigorous justification is called stochastic calculus. Stochastic calculus is some, in some sense similar. There are integrals, but with respect to Brownian motion, Poisson processes and other processes. And these kind of stochastic integrals Indeed, indeed, they express very well what happens on the world, different world exchanges, on stock markets, auctions markets, and so on. So they are the natural mathematics for this kind of financial instruments. Now I again will be back to these call and put options. And what I am considering, indeed, these are European style call and put options. And my topic of presentation is American options. Now, what is the difference between, between European style options and American type options? The basic difference is now look that when a holder of the option purchases this option and he pays initial price for it, which is called premium, then he should wait up to the time of expiration of maturity date. And inside the time interval, he can do nothing. So he does not have a right to exercise call on put at the time of instant. Just he has to wait to the end of that interval then he has a choice. Either he exercises that option or he neglects that option. Absolutely. So, because he has free choice. Now, what about the issuer, financial institute? They are obliged to satisfy the requirements of that option. If the holder, if the holder asks them to exercise that option, so the issuer has no free option. So they are obliged to satisfy requirements 
or uh, you know, uh, or, or what is written in the call or put option. Now, what about American options? When a person purchases American call option, he pays for this initial cash amount, which is called the American options price or otherwise premium. And after that, he is free in his choice. At any time instance, starting from T from zero up to the end, the maturity date, he can he can come to the financial institution and ask them to exercise the option. And when usually a person comes to exercise the option, if he sees that suppose call option holder, he observes the current stock price in the internet, suppose. And he, and he finds out that, uh, uh, that the price of a share of stock increases, increases uh, very rapidly, you know. So, very rapidly. Uh, and uh, in that case, he may decide that it is, it is more appropriate for him to exercise that option. Or he's the holder of a put. And at some instant, he decides that the stock price reached such a level that it's appropriate not to wait to the end of that interval, but just now at that instant to exercise. He has a right uh, to do that. But the task for the issuer is quite complicated. Now look, in the European option case, the issuer or seller uh, or writer of that uh, put option. So they uh, are constructing a portfolio which value at the final date should be not less than the tail of that option. While in the American option case, uh, the issuer does not know when the holder option will come to him and ask him that, to exercise that option. And each one should be right at all time instance. That's very complicated job. So they have sold the American options to different clients. Different clients decide, de, de, decide at different time instance. So some time instances are preferable for one client, whereas another time is for other clients. And so, uh, uh, and so the issuer should be ready at all instances of time. If the client will come, they should cover the liabilities written in a call or put option. Now I move to some small mathematics here, and then I directly will go to complicated topic of American options. Now look. What happens at maturity date we are considering European style options, where exercise is possible only at the end of the time interval. There are two possibilities, two opportunities at time T. Either the market price of a share of stock will be strictly greater than K. That K is called the strike price or exercise price of the option. Or the market price of the share of stock will be less or equal than K. Now, what will happen in this situation if we consider the holder, that means buyer of call option? So, buyer of call option will be very satisfied if he purchases a share of call for the fixed price K. He does not want to pay more than that. Now look the first situation that market price is greater than the exercise price. Of course, he will happily exercise in that case his option and ask the financial institution for this price K to sell him a share of stock. Now look. He pays the amount, cash amount K, and he wants to receive a share of call. While the market price is higher, now 
formula to get the difference, ST minus K, you see here. So the issuer is faced with a difficult problem from where to take the difference. If he gets the difference yet, the cash amount buys a share of stock on stock market and gives it to the holder of color sheet. And exactly here is the basic idea of Merton, Robert Merton, who has done fundamental discovery in finance theory in the start of 1970s. There were three economists, Myron Schultz and Fischer Black and Robert Merton, who has done revolutionary discovery in modern finance theory. The famous Black Schultz formula may be you hear because all students know something about Black Scholes formula. This was invented by Black Scholes and also by their teacher Merton. Just they published several months before that paper. And after several months, Robert Merton has, has published more expanded paper and so many <laughs> problems. It happens in science, you know. Now, in spite of that, in 1997, they were awarded the Nobel Prize. At that time, Black was already dead, and uh, the Nobel Prize was awarded to Myron uh, Scholes and Robert Merton. So what they invented indeed? They have found the correct formula for the price of European options. And it depends root on five parameters, you know. S0 is the initial price of a share of stock, which you know in advance, say time equals zero. K is the strike for exercise price written in that option. Kb is the maturity or expiration date. What are sigma and R? Sigma is the basic parameter in all financial theory. This is called volatility of stock price. This is basic parameter because all this movement, what you see, chaotic, is called by volatility. What is volatility? Volatility is related to the risk of the stock. So, and uh, how volatile it is related to this picture? So, more frequent the fluctuations become, and they show more size, usually volatility increases. Smaller the chaotic movements, volatility decreases. If I draw here uh, some picture of classical function, suppose x squared, or x squared minus 3, suppose. That is a very regular curve. And for that curve, volatility is just zero. Because everything is determined in advance. Nothing is unknown. While here, you know, if you know the trajectory from zero to the current time t, you can predict nothing after that. Because this chaotic movement starts afresh from there. There is no person in this world, even very genius, who can say exactly what will be the stock price in six months, for example. Nobody can predict, even great investors, which are every day based in internet, you see them. Nobody can tell exactly what will be the value. So they may predict with high probability that stock price will be in some interval. Of course, they can do that prediction, prediction, but no, no, nobody can tell you the exact value of that. And because of that, this is very unpredictable thing, you know. So stock price movements over time are very unpredictable. So, 
for these kind of unpredictable objects, classical mechanics, classical mathematics is useless, you know. So what you know from calculus is absolutely useless if you consider this kind of chaotic movement. It needs absolutely different calculus. This calculus is developed during the last 40 years, developed on a very high level, has its it's very complicated technique and use used in financial management, quantitative finance, on the exchanges, on stock exchanges, on options exchange and so on. So uh, I am again back here to this tale of what I call option. Now I told you that there is a difference and this difference uh, should be from where, from where brought by issue of financial institution. Now what they do? Uh, at the initial time, t equals zero. So they receive the payment for this option, premium. And now this is the, their initial capital. Now after the uh, initial time, they, they create such a portfolio of assets and such a clever portfolio that the value should increase over time and when the time the expiration date is realized they should have that amount maximum between difference and zero you know so perhaps you know what does it mean yes maximum between number and zero what about uh put option i will not start to explain the same the case is reversed here here the payoff is maximum between K minus S, K and zero. So what is K? K is the exercise price of the option. That means at which price you can buy or sell your own stock. And what is ST? That is, the ST is the price of a share of stock at future date B, which nobody can predict on this earth. Nobody can tell exactly what it is. But surely, there will be only two opportunities. Either the price exceeds K or less than K. In any case, this is a pay for a call. This is a pay for a put. And they should try very heavily, financial institution, to constantly change their portfolio that at the final date, they should have an amount of cash, not, that, not less than this. No, you know it sounds strange. How it can be done? Because there is a risk. Nobody knows exactly where you are still. And how can financial institutions construct such a clever hedging portfolio, portfolio that in 100% the value in cash of that portfolio at time can be, will be not less than pay of, of a call, which they should pay to the holder of that option. It turns out that in some financial model, which is called the Black Scholes model, or otherwise it is called geometric Brownian motion model, it is possible. That was the basic discovery of three persons, economists, very well educated in mathematics, you know, of Schultz, Black, and Robert Merton. They discovered fundamental thing, which was unbelievable in 1960s, that completely you can hedge European options. That means that in some financial models, in 100%, that means with probability 1, you can cover the liabilities written in financial contract. And for that discovery, they have awarded Nobel Prize. Now, if you understand anything from my talk, now I have to move to my uh, basic topic. And uh, I will go very fast. Uh, now, look. This is a problem of hedging of the American option. 
Now, what is the difference between American and European auction? For European auctions, these three persons, which I have already mentioned, they found the exact formula. Just you put that parameters in that formula, and you will find the correct price for four and two auctions. And also, this formula gives you opportunity to construct optimal hedging portfolio by which you will cover all liabilities in foreign put auction but for, for European style auctions. Now what about American auctions? Here things are very complicated very complicated because you know American auctions can be exercised any time from the initial time up to the end uh, the maturity of the auction. And because of this additional choice in time, problem mathematically becomes rather complicated than the case considered by Robert Merton. In spite of the army of the scientists, you know, mathematicians, economists, finance specialists, and even engineers who are very eager usually to attack complicated financial or mathematical problems, but more, mostly without any success. <laughs> but they like very much, you know, to attack with their very restricted knowledge. Usually they attack like a shark, complicated problem. It's very rare happen that they solve them, but they are very eager to attack this because they will they will have a great name in one if they solve that. It rarely happens, you know. So and uh, in spite of the whole army of researchers for the last 40 years there is not found exact formula for American option price. And uh, here the problem is very complicated because problem is highly nonlinear. Now I want to pass very rapidly just for you to see what kind of mathematics you are in work. And all this mathematics is based on classical calculus, stochastic calculus, and also very solid foundation you should need in partial differential equations to justify anything in financial mathematics. Just I will pass very, very fastly, you know, this my topic. Now you see the retreating what we get FPR. What is that? That is called probability space. I am professor in probability, stochastic and statistics. That is our basic object, omega F P. And P written R. What is PR? That is probability with respect to real world phenomena, according which all financial exchange work. That is a very complicated thing. Now we go further. We see some differential there. Now look to the now look there to this kind of equation. This is called stochastic differential equation. And solution of this is the so-called generalized Brownian or generalized geometric Brownian motion. Geometric Brownian motion is the basic model for financial markets. And now we go, now we go further, and now you see here we see the function. Now look there, function VDX. What is that function? That is, that function denotes the American option price. Where at the current time t, when the market price of a share is equal to x. Nobody knows the expression for this function, I already told you. Nobody knows analytical or explicit expression in spite of the 40 years the whole army of scientists tried it. Uh, now what is important, it appears that each partial derivative with respect to 
x. So we consider the value of American options. Then we differentiate it. But remember, neither the value is known analytically, explicitly, nor it's partial derivative. So that partial derivative we do not know analytically. But that is very important. It appears that if you know the partial derivative of value function, you can construct optimal hedging portfolio. And that means that at each time instant be between zero and TB, you have enough amount of cash. If any buyer of that American option comes to you and tells you, now please, satisfy the requirements of your option and exercise that option. If that is a call option, he asks from you that now please, I pay amount K for a share of code and give me a share of code. So we will have enough amount of money to cover all needs, all requirements written in that American option. If you know that function, I I will again show you. So that is here, partial derivative of the unknown value function with respect to variable x. Now we go further just to look to see. And ultimately, what was that aim of my uh, investigation? This topic and this research work is published in a very reputable American Journal of Mathematical Finance. It has its impact factor 1.35. So it is very well known among finance specialists. And here, what we have done, indeed, we have found another way, not knowing, not knowing the value function, nor its partial derivative, just knowing the approximation to value function, which is done usually by numerical methods or more than multi methods, we are able to approximate the partial derivative to use that for our hedging purposes. And we have shown that our hedging portfolio does very well. So its value process is very close to ideal optimal hedging portfolio whose expression nobody knows in, in this world. So we found another way to solve a complicated problem and mathematically it rests on the notion of comix envelope. Now if you look here you see VH at the time instant at x and there is some semicircle. By this we have denoted the conic envelope of a given fraction. What is a conic envelope geometrically? Now, you know, if you have any curve drawn here, just you take a rope or you take some thread and you stretch from below on that graph. And the position it takes will be the conic envelope of that. That can be calculated using computer. There exist programs which calculate conic envelope. Then we take the conic envelope, which is denoted by the H and semicircle, and we calculate its derivative. That is very simple. And it appears that if we use that derivative of the conic envelope in the hedging portfolio, we shall reach our aim. We shall construct such a portfolio, the value of which at each time instant is very close to the value of ideal portfolio, the expression of which nobody knows in this world. So, and also we were able to estimate the difference between, between ideal and constructed by us uh, by this complex envelope method. It is given in the theorem. So, you know, usually young people, uh, they can have some intuition. When they work in finance, some intuition
generation develops also because they observe these price movements, they gain some technical analysis. This technical analysis is not a science, you know, but it gives you some uh, uh, so experience. And after having that experience, you are able to come to some intuitive decisions. You may find very clever solution of practical problems, but to justify is 100 times complicated. That is an indeed justification of any uh, discovery in modern financial mathematics can be done only by professional. For ordinary people who does not have enough basis in modern finance, modern stochastic calculus, and very basic knowledge in partial differential it is impossible. Even if you try 50 years, you cannot do that. You have to have high level of scientific education and uh, uh, so experience in working in science. Otherwise, you will never justify. It's very complicated. Now that theorem is our basic result, and look to this expression, what is in the left-hand side, what is in the right-hand side. So that by T, which I have used also that notation here, is the ideal portfolio which the issuer financial institution should create to cover the liabilities written in American option. But that is unknown. You can only approximate it by numerical methods or modern Monte Carlo methods. While we have constructed our approximate portfolio, difference between them and an expectation with respect to real world, uh, real world economy is bounded by the right hand side. Here you see some constant. Then there are two parameters. Delta is the time mesh size. We are making rebalancing of our portfolio at some, uh, at some discrete time instance, you know, TK. And delta is the difference between them. It goes to zero. And H is the parameter showing uniform approximation of the of the unknown value function of the American option by some numerical method. It is all already known because there exist several numerical methods to approximately calculate the American option price that the formula doesn't exist. So uh, this inequality 19 says that indeed our intuitive method is justified or rigorously using modern mathematics because difference between our portfolio value and ideal portfolio value tends to zero when the parameter of approximation goes to zero, when the mesh size goes to zero. And the fourth thing is quite complicated. Class, show you what kind of mathematics is used, you know, just to have some understanding of it. And very extensive scientific literature which I have used. So that is the, uh, so that was the main topic of my presentation, you know. So in this, just I want to say to you that without knowing stochastic calculus, which I know that is not taught at your university, you cannot justify any kind of intuitive, your, uh, you know, some intuitive guess in modern finance. Simply it is impossible. So, as economics faculty students, they need basic knowledge in, in classical calculus, those students to wish to work in modern finance, not co not co or quantitative not qualitative finance. In qualitative finance, it may somehow be done, you know, without mathematics, just based 
own intuition. But if you work in the field of quantitative methods of modern finance, it is completely impossible without stochastic calculus, which was created during the last 40 years. So you have no, no uh, basic knowledge to solve some problems in modern. It is impossible. So just remember from me that wherever you be at ISET or at other university in the world, so if we wish to work in modern uh, finance in the field of uh, in the field of financial mathematics, financial management, quantitative finance. Surely, the knowledge of stochastic calculus is needed. And stochastic integrals, we refer to Brownian motion, they express exactly, they express, uh, you know, the value process of portfolio. The correspondence is one to one. Financial objects are just stochastic integrals, you know, correspondence is one to one. What happens in banks, at our banks or at other banks, and what they are doing, and uh, the value of that portfolio is representable through stochastic in the, in integrals, you know. There is no discrepancy. So stochastic calculus is a natural language to, uh, to express modern financial objects that I wanted to add. So now now I finish in I talk.